We all want our careers to make an impact in some way or another, right? In some careers, that impact means literally saving lives. Today, we're talking about careers for people who are interested in the world of healthcare. The healthcare industry is projected to grow 16% by 2030, which is much faster than the average for all other occupations. But if you're not quite sure where to start, we'll help you out. Let's explore five different career options in five very different areas of health. Microbiologists study all the teeny tiny things that can have a huge impact on our health. That includes bacteria, algae, and fungi. Mmm, tasty. So, as a microbiologist, you have to be willing to do some dirty work. Your job can involve working on wound cultures, analyzing urine samples, and studying sputum. But if you find that kind of stuff totally cool, this career makes the dirty work worth it. Microbiologists are often at the forefront of incredible medical breakthroughs, helping us understand and control the spread of major diseases. In fact, microbiologists have been critical in our fight against COVID-19. To find out more, we went to Mayo Clinic Hospital to talk to microbiologist Felicia Rice about what a typical day looks like at her work. So in microbiology, we work closely with infectious disease. We get specimens down from the hospital, and then uh, we have processors that plate whatever they get. Like if you have strep throat and they swab your throat, that all gets put on these little plates and then we read the plates. And then we put it in this media, this is called viral transport media, and it keeps those viruses living until we can test it. And this test that we have tests for three different bacteria. So in an hour, we can tell you if you've got influenza A, influenza B, coronavirus. It's like a window into the puzzle of what's going on with this patient. Nursing encompasses so many areas of medicine, so it's a great career path to pursue if you know you want to work in the field, but aren't quite sure what you want to specialize in. As you complete your education and start to do rotations, you'll get exposed to all different practices within medicine, so you can start to find your niche. And ultimately, you can work in almost any sort of practice, from podiatry to psychiatry. When Mustafa al Makda was training to become a nurse, he found that he gravitated towards working in the ER, Today, he works in a level one trauma center, which means his hospital is often responsible for taking in severely injured patients. As you can imagine, this is a high pressure nursing job, but for the right kind of person, it's extremely rewarding work. So level one is, um, you know, the highest level of trauma care that you, can, that you can get. It means you're equipped to kind of handle everything that kind of comes your way. It's definitely a busy place, and it's really cool because when you're the designated location where uh, something happens out there, you know they're going to come to you. Interesting enough, I mean, you sometimes work a shift and then you go home and you hear about it on the news. You know, it's like, oh, it's, you know, you can't say it <laughs> yeah. because of patient privacy, yeah. but you know, you think to yourself, that's pretty cool. I was in that room with that patient and um, I was a part of their care. So um, it's definitely a very, I mean, a very exciting environment to be around. And the care that you give in, in a critical care setting. Um, it, you, you sometimes get to see immediate results, mm -hmm. and that's what's really cool. It's kind of gratifying. It's, it's meaningful to you, it's meaningful to the patient. Okay, so real talk. I just learned that this job exists, and this hidden gem sounds super cool because it's a really interesting mashup for anyone who likes both arts and sciences. Medical illustrators use art, animation, and even video to help us non-medical folks visualize and understand what's going on inside our bodies. This work can be very useful in the education space to help medical students better understand the inner workings of the human body, but it can also have some surprising applications, like helping juries understand lawsuits related to medicine. To get started in the field, you have to gain experience in both art and medicine. So how do you do both? We talked to Chinami Michaels, who studied biology and art as an undergrad, and then earned a graduate degree in biomedical visualization. So my work combines science and art. We basically allow the research scientists and the doctors to do what they do best because we handle the publication process. Basically they come to us with a manuscript or with an idea and they explain it to us and we figure out how to illustrate that. And then we get their idea and their work ready for publication. Biomedical engineering is another field that lets you mash up a lot of different interests. 
It sits at the intersection between science, technology, and medicine. So if you're interested in all of those areas and how they can work together, this could be the career for you. But what kinds of practical applications does biomedical engineering have? How about using tech and engineering to build new body parts? Check out this peek into the life of Dima Elisa, the CEO and founder of Visma 3D, a company that designs and 3D prints medical devices, body parts, and other life-saving tools. My company, Vizmed 3D, prints body parts, not unlike these, but more specifically, an image that's captured as an MRI or a CT scan, and use that on a patient-specific level to produce perhaps an aorta. So this aorta had a dissection, which is a big old hole, and most people die from it. If I can use this to help not only identify where the hole is, but also earmark where future areas of rupture are going to be, that kind of predictive intelligence is powerful. It's just an incredible landscape of opportunity. If you're interested in health and medicine, but you feel most fulfilled when you're teaching and mentoring others, you can do both. This is a career option for people who are serious about educating others, but also love educating themselves, because to become a professor, you'll likely need a PhD. Another key thing about being a professor is that you often have to spend a certain amount of time doing research or applying your research to the real world. And for Michael Wilkes, a global health professor at UC Davis, doing the work outside of the classroom is sometimes the most rewarding part of his job. I spend my time sort of in three major activities. One is research, and I spend a lot of my research time divided in two areas, one looking at global health. Um, I spend the rest of my research time looking at the area of medical education and how we train the next gen. The second thing I do is I, I take care of uh, patients and my specialty is adolescent medicine and I run a very high risk teen clinic uh, in downtown Sacramento for homeless teens. And then the third thing I do, I won't surprise you, is I do an awful lot of teaching uh, of, uh, of medical students primarily, but also uh, PA and NP students and veterinarians uh, and, and other health science students. Hopefully this video helped show you that no matter what it is about medicine that interests you, there's clearly a place where you can make a difference in the world of healthcare. To explore even more opportunities in the world of healthcare, check out our new documentary, Caring Forward. Link in the description.